Hey guys, for today's video, I'm gonna be filming my next hit or quit it thoughts on hauls. I actually did two this month. The other one I did was focusing on the products that I picked up during the spring 2021 Ulta 21 Days of Beauty and Sephora VIB sale haul. I will have that one linked for you guys. And I'm sorry if the lighting is a little bit off for some reason when I wear white, it just messes my lighting. But it's, you know, it's just a tank top. It's not like a full everything white, but it still seems to be throwing off. I'm not super in love with my makeup today. I don't like it with my white shirt, but uh, we're here. I need to get this video filmed. So we're doing it and you know, I'm testing some different products. So that's something. So I will have my original video linked down below. I'll list all the items. I'll have my playlist linked if you're unfamiliar with this series. Basically, I'm going to be reviewing the things I hauled one year ago to let you know my current thoughts on those products. And First, starting with the things I had gotten from Ulta, the diamond gift for that month was the Hemp's Triple Moisture Body Cream in the summer edition. I did end up passing that on because I didn't love the scent. I'm not really like a fruity citrusy person. Then also a free gift of the Nude Sticks Gel Color Lip and Cheek Balm in Siren, which was like some sort of red. I put that in a giveaway because it's not a color I would get use out of. Then I got the Beauty Bakery Cotton Candy Champagne Blush palette because Emmanuel has raved about that for years and there are four shimmery blushes you have like one coral and then basically three mauves and they were way too similar to one another that I couldn't justify having a whole palette for that so it did go back I got another of my EOS smooth stick and sweet mint which you guys know is my all-time favorite lip balm I love the texture it's not too thin or too thick really easy to reapply throughout the day I love the scent of it we'll buy that forever and ever then I believe this was a congratulations you became diamond again gift it was the Clinique beyond perfecting foundation and concealer in number one flax which was too dark for me it had like a neutral undertone which is good because Clinique does not do a good job of undertones with their lighter foundation shades so I did end up giving that to my sister she's really enjoying it I did get a little free mini of the Clinique Moisture Surge 72 hour auto replenishing hydrator I've tried that several times before and I really don't like it it's a little bit sticky and I like a lot of gels but that gel consistency I did not enjoy and here's something that I have to show you this is the Alma Beauty coming to America the Royal Heritage palette and this was limited edition for the coming to America movie but they did recently announce that this is going to be a permanent product which is awesome because this is gorgeous so you have five shimmers five mattes a lot of pinky tones here you have a purple a brown a gold this is a phenomenal formula great foiled shimmers very pigmented smooth mattes blend very nicely i especially love this color here something about the rosiness how brown it is is just so perfect this was one of my favorite palettes of last year highly recommend this one and i did see recently that the mini palette from this collection was at TJ Maxx. So definitely check there. I didn't see the big one, which makes sense if it's going to be permanent, but the mini palette was there. Next, I had purchased the ColourPop Disney Life in the Woods eyeliner set. It had a dusty purple, a light yellow cream, and a rose gold color. I really love the dusty plum. I would love for them to release that shade in their regular formula. So these were the creme gel liners but you had to sharpen them and I think they made these in a few collections and then stopped I think the formula is totally different I know that people don't like that the twist up ones break so easily but I feel like they are pigmented enough and dry enough that they really stay in place I prefer the original formula a lot so these did go back the rosy shade was just a little bit pinker than the rosette shade I already have from them that cream yellow looked weird on me and then the purple was one that I like but I just don't think this is as good I don't think it's as pigmented as long lasting it's just not as good so I'm glad they stopped doing it so I was so afraid that they were going to stop doing the old formula and just do the new but that does not seem to be the case then I got the MAC black cherry extra dimension blush and look don't touch a really pretty coral 
but I did end up returning it. I don't love baked gelée products. I just don't like them. I find them usually hard to pick up on a brush. And I think that this one was fine, but after I got it on, it just wasn't as special as it looked in a swatch. So I'm gonna try to resist buying any more of that formula. I got the Maybelline Sky High Mascara on sale. I still have not tried that yet. I got the NYX Shine Loud High Shine Liquid Lip Color in Overnight here, which was a very weird cool tone light taupey purple. It did not look good on me color wise, but I didn't like the formula. It was very sticky. And I know there's that gloss you put on it, but you would be going through the gloss so fast because you would have to keep reapplying it because it's gonna be sticky on its own. I did not enjoy that. Then I got the NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Tint Pin in Blonde. I did end up returning it. I think it's a good product, but I just can't do my brows that way. I've tried and I don't apply it correctly. I just like fill it in instead of draw on. So it's something that I will definitely buy in the future once I work through some of the other brow products that I have because I want to play around with that technique because I think it looks so beautiful in other people, but I'm just not there yet. And I also had the Urban Decay Brow Blade, which had a pen set on it. I also don't love that one. I would get the NYX over that, but I had that one already at the time, so I didn't need the both of them. And then something that I had just reviewed in that Sephora Ulta Thoughts on Hauls was the KVD Everlasting Blush in Honeysuckle. I originally got it from Sephora, but I did end up returning it brand new and then getting it from Ulta when it went on sale. There it went on sale like a week after it did at Sephora because you guys know that Ulta has a better reward system and I wanted to make sure that I hit diamond for the year. So I needed those extra bucks. And this is a really pretty matte peachy nude blush. I will be keeping this in my collection, but it's not special. If I had to, you know, only keep 10 blushes in my collection, this one would not make the cut. I think the packaging is cute and not too bulky. So a good one, but I wouldn't buy any more unless they were half off, but there are some pretty shades in that lineup. And then from ColourPop, I bought this full price. And then later it came to Ulta, which is a bummer because I could have used a coupon and I could have gotten some Ulta points, but that's okay because I wanted this so bad. I don't usually care about a lot of the ColourPop collabs that are with entities because I'm not into Animal Crossing and Disney movies and lots of other things, but they got me, girl, with the Liz McGuire What Dreams Are Made Of palette. This was in my yearly favorites as well. I love the three looks I made so much. I'll try to remember to link my makeup of the days from Instagram down below. But these two mattes were my favorite. These are mattes with glitter, but they still perform really well. This is a press glitter, but I still end up really liking it. These just perform so well. They're so pretty. They did just a perfect job with the packaging, with the colors for Liz McGuire. And then the other products they had in the collection were like the glitter gels, squeeze two glosses, which again, is perfect for the time period, but I knew I wouldn't get use out of them, but I'm super happy with the palette, the packaging, the colors, the names, everything is so perfect. Very, very happy to have that. And then from Glam Light, I purchased the Ice Cream Dream palette, which I think is very pretty. You got mattes, metallics, some neutrals, and then a lot of pastels and brights. I think this is good, but I'm not in love. And I think it's just kind of because pastels are hard to work with. I need to use it a lot more. I think this is way better than the Violet Voss Flamingo palette, which is another pastel palette I tried before and did not like. This is better than that, but I wasn't wowed. However, I do have two other Glam Light palettes that I've not tried yet, the Michaela and then the Dirty Martini. So once I try those out, I think I'll be able to get a better feel for how I get on with the Glam Light formula in general but this is not a must have for me, but I'm not trying to get rid of it anytime soon. And then from Light Slacker, I think they had a sale or maybe I just had enough polishes to get free shipping. But this is one from her nude collection that I really wanted. I don't know if I've worn this one yet. I think I did probably in the winter. This is Lila. So this is 
like a pinky tan nude. Then from a spring collection, maybe. I don't keep up with these. I loved all of her kale polish collections. A lot of the lice lacquer ones, I just am like, eh. So I haven't purchased from them in a while. This is a really beautiful, dusty, minty sage color in Secret Garden, like the movie slash book. And then from the Moon collection, I got these two creams, and then there's also like a really pretty topper in there. And they've come out with a couple trios that I've been tempted by, but I haven't purchased them. But anyway, I really love these shades. This is Moon River. And this one is Blue Moon. Really beautiful, I like these a lot. It's a really good formula. I'm very happy to have all of these, but I'm also really glad that I'm not going crazy with her collections. Like I said, I think she has great inspiration behind them, but the colors themselves aren't blowing me away, but I do think it's a good formula. And then I had gotten a gift from my friend Lauren. She gave me the Ofra Signature Palette in Empowered, which were the greens. Some of them performed okay, some not so much. Whenever they include shadows in their palette that are either actual mini highlighters or that highlighter formula, those are so good. But their other shimmers are very dull. The mattes are just okay. So I did end up passing that one on. And then we have the Samantha March Life's a Draft palette. I was so excited for that. And originally I thought I would really love that highlighter. But comparing that to some of the other ones I have, it almost has like a slight cool gray cast to it which is odd and I just think I would rather wear Pillow Talk or Cloud Nine or one of the other similar shades from Ofra and then I did not like the bronzer and blush formula. I've tried some others from Ofra as well. I just do not like their blush and bronzer formula. Very powdery. I don't like the color of that shimmer blush I would have loved if it was the matte side because I think that's really pretty but I don't I don't like the shimmer color it's just a little weird on me and the shadows in here again the shimmers for the most part were a little bit dull the mattes needed to be built up it was just okay none of the looks was I like wow I just was hoping for more and really I don't like shimmer shadows that are a basic shimmer I want them to always look metallic and foiled and these did not and then she also gave me the Jaclyn Cosmetics Liquid Lipstick in Truth. I did not like the shade. It was a little too peachy on me. But this is a very drying liquid lipstick formula. that's going to emphasize all of the crackiness in the lips. And I think we're all such gloss people right now that trying different liquid lipstick formulas, like Dose of Colors is still the best for me. There's a few others that I like, but the Jaclyn was just way too matte, so I will not be buying any of those and then lastly i gotten some things from octoly and i have gotten things from octoly three times a bobby brown eyeshadow stick these super goop sunscreens and then a sunday riley good jeans serum so great things but i have the free one for some reason i think because i signed up for octoly when it first started years ago and linked it to my youtube channel it won't let me link it now and I've tried to email the team. I never get a response. It's very irritating. But I signed up for the free one where you get just two credits and it's like a different store. But I signed up for notifications. I never get them. If I do get a notification, the product's already sold out. They go super duper fast. And I know my friend Jamie had been getting a lot of things on there. Her timing was just perfect. But I haven't even seen her get anything from there in a while. So anyways the two products i had gotten would be the mineral sheer screen which i did just use up that is a fantastic body sunscreen doesn't leave a white cast really easy to work in the skin i think this would be good for your face if you're having a beach day but if you're trying to put makeup on top of it i'd say no i just it's a little thicker i just don't love the consistency under makeup but for body it is phenomenal really easy to spread i really really like that one and then something i have not used yet but i will have to use <laughs> this summer would be the resetting mineral powder which is in that little touch-up thing and i do have something from derma e as well so i want to compare the two to see how well they compare i know the derma e leaves like a little bit of like a peachy cast on my fair skin so i definitely have to try that one out 
this summer so i will get back to you on that but i do love the sheer screen so much i think super Dupe does a really good job with their sunscreens i know they have so many different formulas but i haven't tried all of them but the ones i've tried actually are different from one another and i do think they do spf really well but i also am no sarah rose i don't know everything there is to know about sunscreen but anyway guys i'm very happy we have a shorter video here but also, please check out the thoughts and hauls I just did a few videos back. I would love to hear your thoughts on these products in the comments down below. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys.